Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. I'd like to show you another game from the Reykjavik Open, another last round game actually, between Hans Niemann from America and Throstor Thorhalsen from Iceland. So Thorhalsen, former Icelandic champion, he's grandmaster, but he's no longer a professional. He's in his 50s. And actually, I remember chatting to him a few years ago and he acted as a state agent for Bobby Fischer. There were some good stories there. Um, and well, let's talk about his opponent, Hans Niemann from America. He's just 18 years old and with every tournament, he's gaining points, gaining experience. He's really ambitious. He's going from tournament to tournament, um, seemingly without hardly any breaks at all. Um, you know, he's really got the bug for the life of a professional chess player. Played incredibly well in the Charity Cup, um, the recent online uh, tournament. So let's take a look at this. So it's the last round. Now, neither player in contention for first prize but and really only a win uh, would you know get them a decent prize so yeah we can expect both players to go for it here and well um, Niemann he really does play very aggressively um, I think to this point he'd only had one draw so far in the tournament so the opening is a Jabava London system. So this whole opening was really invented by the, the incredibly talented and creative Georgian player, Bardur Jabava. And it's not as silly as it looks. So the bishop reaches here, as in the London system, normal. Uh, but the knight is on c3, so this gives the game a particular kind of character. I mean, normally one would want that pawn so that it could come to c3 or perhaps advance to c4 in some positions. So it's a little bit strange that the knight blocks the c pawn. But really, white is going to try to concentrate, actually, on playing on the other side of the board. And recently, Niemann brought out um, a course on this opening for chessable. And, well, I was talking to him about it uh, when I interviewed him during the, the Charity Cup. And, you know, he put a lot of effort into it. And he's been playing this so much with pretty good results. And here Thorhalsen played a6, which looks very modest. Um, okay, so why a6? I mean, for, for a long time, players were playing c5. And then, you know, e3. And, well... So sometimes then taking and, and a6 is quite a reasonable way to play and then bringing the bishop out. Obviously that stops knight b5. So why a6 straight away? Well, I think the reason is this. After c5, actually white can play the move e4, which certainly doesn't guarantee white an advantage, but it is very, very complicated and Niemann has played this. So that's why Thorhausen went for a6 e3 and now b5 okay so the Icelander you know wanting to get some play on the queen side very directly very quickly and here we have Niemann playing on the king side h4 so this starts potentially a pawn advance now here uh, Thorhausen just played e6 Artemyev against him played a very clever move h6 so just for the moment g4 isn't possible and only then e6 so you'll notice now that it's not possible for white to play g4 well it was still a very complicated game but Artemyev managed to win that so a very subtle move h6 but anyway we have e6 I mean one somehow you know one shouldn't criticize such a, a normal and standard move as e6 but now Niemann starts an initiative on the king side and drives the knight away. Now bishop g2, an interesting move. And normally 
you know, one would think, well, okay, that looks a bit funny to put the bishop here because it's supported by the pawn. But actually, well, as we'll see, interesting things can happen. The position is certainly not closed, particularly when white can sometimes break with e4. Anyway, more on that in a minute. Um, in fact, Niemann in a, in a previous game had played queen g4 here, but bishop g2 is his little improvement uh, after seven minutes, uh, so probably not prepared beforehand. Knight b6, okay, the, the knight spins round trying to find a better square. Knight f3, well you can see that white is already ahead in development and black has to be very careful because if the position opens you know that could be that could spell trouble for black and on now after 16 minutes thought knight c4 now this breaks the basic beginner's rule that one should not move a piece four times in the opening let's count them one two three four yes four times normally I, i'm joking folks normally one says you shouldn't move a piece on more than once so this knight has been played four times and this is pushing it this is stretching it this really is b3 well if the knight goes back then obviously it's a complete waste of time so queen a5 so this was obviously Thorhalsen's idea but watch what happens after precisely 23 seconds castles was played good move and this puts black in a very difficult situation if queen takes knight pawn takes now the position is going to open just watch this is the only piece that's developed and, and that queen is just going to be caught in a in a complete tsunami uh, well for example if queen takes pawn here very simple that just opens up the position opens up the middle, opens up this diagonal. I mean, this is actually terrible for black. Or here, here, it's actually very similar. Just don't count the pawns, just crack the position open, and that is a disaster for black. So, castles has just happened. So the knight dropped back. Right. Here's your time to have a little think. I'll have a slurp of tea. You have a think. How would you play here if you had white? White to play. That's very nice. Well, don't forget that this knight is threatened. Um, so, well, Niemann's in a hurry, I'm telling you. He didn't mess around. Knight takes pawn. And this is just about smashing open the middle of the board. And then pawn takes pawn. It's really simple. So the knight went back uh, and watch out. Queen takes pawn is about to happen as well. Knight b7. And now knight e5. Excellent move. There's no need to take this straight away. Let's play knight e5 and then you can decide later how you're going to take here or maybe not take there at all and do something else and look at black's position it is catastrophic let's see what would happen if black tried to bring the king to safety so let, let's try bishop takes okay now bishop takes pawn of course threatening f7 so black castles well it's pretty simple queen h5 threat to f7 I mean, this is good fun. And this one isn't too complicated. You use the pin and give a little check. And that's checkmate. Wow. Look at that queen. It's in Siberia. That's definitely not a good place to be. Um, and yeah, so this is the, the basic problem. I mean, again, bishop b7, bishop takes d5. Doesn't change anything. Um, knight takes c5. Knight takes pawn. And queen d5 check. Hits that one, hits that one. It is catastrophic. Knight e5, just played. So Thorhalsen played rook a7, which does take the rook off the long diagonal, but oof, 
That's an unpleasant move. Unpleasant to play, that is. Knight takes pawn. I'm sure there's... The, I mean, one could just take on d5, but this is really crushing. Absolutely, there's just no mistake after this. So, king takes... And bishop takes knight. Oh! This is humiliating. So, this one about to happen. Or queen takes, or... I mean, it, it's, it's just dreadful. Bishop takes pawn. At least trying to bring some pieces into play. Queen takes pawn, check. King e7. Okay, you can practically do what you like, but I mean, this is this is the best way for white to play. Queen e5. Now, instead of taking material, rook d1. Excellent move. You know, why should one bother taking this when it is doing absolutely nothing on a7. It's better just to bring a piece into play and you never know, that bishop might actually contribute to the attack as well. Queen b6 played. Well, of course, it's hopelessly lost. And in fact, that was the final move of the game. So let's just see exactly why black resigned. Uh, if queen takes, rook check, it's forced. And then you just take the rook in the corner. Wow, what an absolute demolition. And as I said, Hans Niemann, he's a man in a hurry. And that game showed exactly how 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 much of a hurry he's in. Uh, completely crushing. And yeah, watch out for uh, the Jabava London system. If you're interested, then do check out the course on chessboard. Personally, I think maybe the simplest way to play against this is bishop f5. And if f3, just e6. And yeah, the bishop can get chased around a bit. But this was the game Niemann against Grandelius from Riga 2021 that went like this. Yes, white's gained a bit of space, but actually, you know, it helps that this bishop um, is outside the pawn chain. And well, it was still still a good scrap this game. I think you know black's development is obviously obviously much better there and and the king side in in much better shape for black but it's a mess anyway thanks for watching